part two. Stop. Let me tell you this. Their long-awaited Messiah is another worldly and devil, plain and simple. A devil that they take counsel with on how to operate this world. And by them saying, quote, they will receive there in Hades what is proper for them to receive and afterwards bring it down and seeing the overwhelming evidence of the sexual depravity of our Jewish brothers and sisters to me that can only mean and as we discovered it's within their doctrine before they could be his sucker of gay cock as well I'm just saying now do you believe the scriptures when it tells us our enemies are talking to and making deals with the big guns under the stairs? Before you answer, add this into the equation. Let's continue, please. Personal quote. For the intensity of the descent is determined by the potential for ascent. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That's from the book Mishiach. Who, what, why, and how, where, when by Chum Cramer. Stop. I told you. Now to the next heresy. It's a little confusing at the very beginning, but answers itself quickly. Quote, Keter actually has two levels. A lower level corresponding with AA and an upper level. The intellect of AA, which corresponds to the Ancient of Days. The Atik. The connection between Mashiach and Atik is learned from Daniel's vision. Personal quote. A man came and he approached, which they say means he approached the level of the Ancient of Days. Rashi explains that this refers to Mashiach, who will administer justice to the entire world. Atik thus transcends anything we can conceive. At this level, there is neither past nor future. Everything is in the present. And, as we have seen, every part of creation, from the first constrictions to the lowest level of Ashia, is contained within the Keter Atik. Thus, Atik includes all time and space, yet transcends it all. The soul of Mashiach resides within a tick and it is from this level that all his powers will be drawn when his spirit is released from Hades that's what they're talking about listen to this quote and since he transcends time and space Mashiach can transcend every transgression ever done he can bring each person to a state prior to his having sinned this is because in Keter, God overrides the rules that he set up for all the Sephira and their interaction between each other and man. With the power inherent in this exalted level, Mashiach will be able to bring the world to the state of perfection. And that's from the book Mashiach, Who, What, Why, How, Where, When by Chom Kramer. Stop. Wow. What type of damn God do they serve? But hopefully you can perceive without your customary doubt that the evildoers got a line to their mind and a hook in their behinds. But the strange thing about this is the fish are jumping into the boat all on their own. Let's check out one more for the road, shall we? Under teaching. Subtitle, Defeat of Satan Despite appearances to the contrary, Mashiach in captivity slash assimilated. Quote, this brings us to another crucial principle that appears in the writings of the Ari and especially in the Kabbalah school of the Goan. Along with the law of parallelism, which is more than one way to write the same thing, which is very subjective, thus rife with self-interpretations. But that's how they do it. There is yet another cosmological law that King Solomon formulated. This law states, personal quote, there is a time when the evil man subjugates the good man 
to his own undoing. And they want to say that's Ecclesiastes 8 and 9. Like they always do, people. Of course, you know, this is not what the scripture says, nor is it the correct context. But check out what they say it means. Buckle up, buttercups. Quote, in other words, the forces of good must temporarily suffer at the hands of evil in order to undermine those very forces by extracting and drawing out aspects of the fallen forces of good that are being held there in captivity. The principle of, personal quote, a time for subjugation is the second reason why the higher knowledge of Mishiach ben Yosef is forced to go into exile. His soul must be subjugated to captivity, abuse, and, under specific circumstances, even temporary loss of identity in order to redeem specific inverted fragments of supernatural wisdom. What? <laughs> And they believe this shit. They believe this shit. If you thought that was wicked, perceive this quote. Let's continue. Only by the, listen to this man. Only by the captor believing that the captive is under his control can the captive get close enough to draw out the imprisoned energies from the soul of the captor himself. Stop. Bingo. Did you hear that? I can hear you. Did you hear them just tell us they do not perceive and believe they are deceived into having relations with known devils? Clock that. It's their strategy to, just like the typical strong black woman, it's their lifelong desire to act like a $3 Romanian whore to get close enough to break a big baller down. And just like the typical strong black woman, when she is trying to justify her actions, you know, saying stuff like, men do it too, she does not understand that she is way over her head and is the only one truly getting burnt in the end. I know everything that just came out of my mouth is true because of what the bloody bastards say next. Quote, the bad guy thinks he is winning and yet he is ultimately losing to the good guy. The catch is, however, that in order for this mode to operate successfully, not only can't the bad guy know the truth, the good guy as well cannot really know what is going on. In fact, the good guy can't always even know that he has been turned inside out and that he is in a present state of captivity, also known as assimilation. <laughs> this is an insurance policy. It guarantees that the divinity of Mashiach ben Joseph will always be protected whenever it is forced to go into exile among the Kilpa. And that was from the gift of Kabbalah, Tamar Frankel, P. Example, bingo, wow! Some of these cats don't even know that they have the equivalent of legion within them. I'm at a loss for words at this point. <laughs> Endure, everybody. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, my God's will. The next video, um, it's it's going to be your choice to look at it, and I notice how I'm saying that. Um, I think my God has given me a sliver of understanding to exactly what's going to set these cats off to kill us. Uh, the the actual offense. Um, history dictates, let me put it that way, uh, that I may be on the right track. So by me telling you this, I don't want you to get in the heat of battle when these things occur 
and you go saying the same doggone thing and the same fate happens to you. I remember telling y'all before that my God, and we went through this time and time, you know, through the scriptures, my God didn't sanction that second temple. And I think he has shown me through the scripture, uh, through many scriptures uh, and, and, and the gospels that we were right. Um, and it, yeah, so to understand if I'm right, uh, to understand this next thing, you're going to have to keep it to yourself. This is going to be information for you and only you because it can't get you killed. History dictates that it will. All right. So that's my God will. He'll let me do that next. And, you know, if, if something else comes out, you know it's coming. But, you know, something else came to the head. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, little sisters and brothers, as you just heard, these mother suckers are crazy. They don't even know that they're crazy. They actually think that they're right. This man just said in his dissertation, they've been turned inside out. <sighs> Indoor.